Here's Brody Brazil. So let me take you back to the fall of 2022. It was the beginning of not one, but two hockey seasons ago, and the NHL debuted a new technology that they had been working on for quite some time behind the scenes. It was these digital dasher board advertisements, and by now you're very used to them. I mean, what you're seeing right there on the boards is not real. The people in attendance are seeing the normal plastered on advertisements. They're a little like stickers that basically go on the wall there. But what everybody is seeing at home are these graphics that are electronically superimposed just for television. And so everybody's kind of used to them now. But let's not forget, when they first came out, there were a lot of problems. I mean, take this game, for example, between Vancouver and Edmonton. So this is a Sportsnet broadcast. What's going on right there? I think there's supposed to be two players and a ref right there and a D-man right there, and they've all disappeared. And why am I seeing Esso, which is a gas company sponsor, with a Rogers sponsor, and then a little mix of uh, a, a little mix of both right in there? I mean, it is all in shambles on this one screen. And I'm only showing you a still frame of it, but if you watched this in real time. It was glitching, people were disappearing, the puck was disappearing, it was all over the place. And then all of a sudden, you know, in the control room, they they hit the cancel button, it takes all that away until they can iron out the technical problems. But this wasn't just a one-time thing. We saw basically that right there happening on a lot more NHL broadcasts regionally and nationally than anybody would have hoped to have seen. And so that brings me to some of the criticism. And you saw a lot of this. Look, these tweets are from... October of 2022. So yeah, the beginning of two hockey seasons ago. These digital boards, uh, board ads are horrible and distracting. Stop it with those digital ads. They need to stop immediately. They're distracting. They change every 20 to 30 seconds. Changing during play, big pass. They were horrible last night. The latency issues on the smart TV and too much movement. Anyway, so the public and the hockey world was quick to jump on these Uh, these digital dasher board ads, because they were different and they stood out and they were obviously impacting the watchability of the game broadcast, which is a big deal, right? The NHL does not want to have problems with this. And to summarize the problems, again, sometimes it was the overlay technology didn't work, like players were disappearing behind ads or ads were appearing in the wrong spots or you couldn't find the puck. So the, the actual technology was buggy and not working. Sometimes it was just the fine-tuning of things, like the ads looked too bright compared to the rest of the ice surface and the stands. Like, the ads were super, super high intensity and everything else was kind of toned down. I remember that being a problem. People also complained because there was too much distracting movement during play, like the puck would enter in somebody's offensive zone and all of a sudden a car would kind of drive around the boards or, like, slot machine uh, graphics would appear on the digital boards. And it just, it was a lot for the eye to consume. Like you're trying to watch players and track a puck. And then all of a sudden you're like, whoa, that was just kind of a lot all happening on my screen at once. And so it kind of felt like years of testing and technology behind all this with the NHL. And don't get me wrong. You don't just do this overnight and put it on all your broadcasts league wide, which it was right. Again, regional, local, national broadcasts, they were everywhere. But it all came across as feeling a little not ready for prime time and a little rushed. And I think everybody would admit that. And that was kind of the case for most of not this current season, which is just wrapping up, but last season, 2022-23. This was a piece in Yahoo Sports. NHL fans are already fed up with the new digital board ads. That was from October 13th of 2022, start of two years ago, which said, quote, fans are demanding the NHL remove the digitally enhanced dasher boards, while others believe they should be used once the system is improved and free of any distracting glitches. Complaints also came from newcomers watching at home who are learning about the game. They struggled with tracking the puck as the boards lit up and took attention away from the play. I totally understand. Newcomers, expert hockey viewers, not a lot of people like change necessarily, but especially when change is this obvious and is this buggy. But isn't it crazy? Here we are in 2023 dash the end of the 24 campaign. Have you heard much this year about complaints or distractions or problems? Did you witness a lot of that this season? 
I covered most of the Sharks here. I didn't see much. I'm still watching playoff games. I don't see much. In fact, I think what I see is this technology cleaned up and even taken to a new level. Like they're doing new and better things with the technology, which is, by the way, something I've actually always been in favor of. I know it sounds crazy, but even when everybody was complaining two years ago about this, I was kind of standing out defending it, saying, I realize it's glitchy, but they'll figure it out. And you'll actually like this from the television standpoint over the years. I'll explain why in just a second. So what happened here? Is it just the case that fans are all of a sudden uh, more familiar with the technology? Did the technology become just a little bit more reliable? Yeah, I think I think both those things definitely happened. Uh, the ads being less intrusive? Uh, I don't know about that. I still see a lot of movement. I also think it's like baseball. You know, they have the ads behind the catcher and they don't rotate those ads or they don't change those ads while the pitcher is pitching or while the ball is in play. I do feel like that's important. And I do feel like the NHL has worked on the timing of the changing and the animation of those ads. Again, I think there is a time and a place for them to change. Uh, You know, maybe when the puck comes out of the zone or maybe there's a certain dead time when it can change, but not typically when there's game impacting action happening. That's not necessarily a good time for that to change and distract everybody's everybody's viewpoint. So maybe a little bit less intrusive. I don't know. Not entirely, though. But yes, I think this might be it. The NHL actually listened and responded to everything everybody was saying. They fixed this. Technology fixed it. Hardworking people fixed this. But the league in general took care of it, and its broadcast partners took care of it. Here's an example of the Oilers' last game as I record this right here, right now. This is the one that got them to the uh, to the Stanley Cup final. And, and here's what I what I actually really like about how simple this is. Here's an ad for Scotiabank, right, which takes up all the boards during this time period. If it's 30 seconds at a time or 45 seconds or this shift or or maybe it's because they're on the power play. I don't know the convention of of why Scotiabank right now is, is getting this particular time. But, you know, they're one of like 20 different ads that you might see rotated through. But look how clean this is. Like there's a logo here. There's a logo here. Visit Scotiabank, probably .com. Little, you know, comment here uh, between, you know, the blue line and the dots. I mean, all this, this is like what the camera shot's going to see. All of that is strategic. They don't just throw these anywhere. They know exactly what they're doing when they place those. But look how clean that is. Instead of seeing ad number one right here, ad number two right there, ad number three right there, ad number four right here, ad number five, you see what I'm doing here. This is kind of how it looks normally. All those ads, now they don't move and they're not animated and they don't really change the entire time, but that is kind of a little bit more distracting to have all those different things kind of looking like a phone book on the boards, how it always used to be. This for me cleans it up. This is less distracting. Yeah, I see it's Scotiabank. It's one thing. That's it. I'm not looking at Rogers and Esso and does Pizza 73 still exist? Anyway, Boston Pizza. Sorry, I'm just Tim Hortons. Sorry, I'm going all my favorite spots here. But the point is, that's so much more simple and less intrusive than the way it ever used to be. So long as It's not glitchy. So that's what I like the most. That's what I've been saying all along, that fans are going to like this. Now, I also realize I'm no dummy. Like, Tylenol is right there inside the blue line. (laughs) Like, they've added that too. But again, that's superimposed. So people at the game don't actually actually see that. So I like that the most. Here's what else I like the most. This is right after McDavid scored that unbelievable pull-in and drag goal. Uh, to help the Oilers get to the Stanley Cup final. But but look at look at how cool this is. Now, all of a sudden, when there's game action, they're taking those boards, they're wiping out the ads for just a second. And I know it says GOA. I'll put the L in there. <laughs> Oilers goal, because it was still animating when I got the freeze frame. Look how cool that is. Right? So there, and, and when do you ever see hockey boards Oiler blue like that? That's a cool way of using it. Now, Maybe in the future, maybe they take it to the next level. Maybe they put something valuable over here. Stats or something on the wall that that's not, again, it's a balance. Don't overdo it. Don't make it too distracting. But what if they use some of these spots on the boards and they superimpose really valuable information or stuff that you'd want to see? 
Or like this, in the case of an Oilers fan, that really kind of creates the mood. You know, just like how this score bug animates, it's, it's saying Oilers goal right now. But I really like that type of stuff. I'm glad they've actually used this technology and are now building on it. And they have improved the NHL's digital dasher board system. So again, there's a reason. And it's funny, I'm talking about this now because not a lot of people are complaining about it anymore. The NHL doesn't take care of and fix everything. Let's be honest about that. But I think in this case, they did. And I congratulate them on that. You've made it here to the end of this video. Thumbs up down below. That'll greatly help me in this video and this channel. And also, if I could ask, in case you're not already, go down there and hit that subscribe button. I would also really appreciate that. Trying to grow the channel, but most importantly, I would definitely love to see you back here next time. And that is how we can make it happen.